Jupiter is the largest planet in our solar system, a massive 318 times heavier than Earth, and it has been quite the hot spot for science news recently. NASA's Juno probe entered into orbit around Jupiter at the beginning of July, while in a new finding, it appears that the famous Great Red Spot is kicking up a bigger storm than first imagined. Telescope in hand, Claire Armstrong sought to catch a glimpse of the gas giant in the night sky. Is the telescope yours? Yeah, so this telescope was given to me by my grandpa when I was younger because I really liked looking at the stars. It doesn't seem too bad this evening. There's, there's a few clouds, but you can see some stars. Have you ever seen Jupiter through a telescope? I have. It's you have? actually the only thing I've seen through really? a telescope. Really? Have you actually yeah. seen it? I've been, That's amazing. I've been to the old telescope in the Institute of Astronomy. So, yeah, my friend did you see like, Jupiter. Did you see the big spot? Yeah, yeah. You actually saw the big exciting. spot? Yeah, you can see the, I guess, the clouds or... Like, oh, you can see yeah. the movements in... in the, yeah. Really? That's amazing. Well, I mean... But you but can, you can see, see the, the, the pattern. Yeah. So the, the red spot has like a pattern. Despite my efforts with my telescope that night, it clearly wasn't my time to catch a glimpse of the largest planet in our solar system. Instead, to paint myself a picture, I spoke to Professor David Rothery, planetary expert from the Open University. Jupiter's been known about by all cultures in the world since uh, you know, before records begin. It has a big spot on its surface, which is 20-something thousand kilometres across. Now, that's more than twice the diameter of the Earth. It's a big feature because Jupiter's a big planet. And did we have any idea what it actually was? Well, not at first. I mean, we, we now know that Jupiter is so massive and has an enormously deep atmosphere. And when we look at Jupiter, we're seeing the cloud tops, which are of condensed ammonia gas. And above that, and mixed in with it, there's lots of hydrogen and helium as well. As Jupiter rotates so quickly, then it takes 10 hours to rotate. You know, it spins in 10 hours, oh, which wow. is for such a big planet. is an amazingly fast rate. And the atmosphere is divided into latitudinal bands. Some are darker, some are brighter in colour. And um, the, the red spot sits in one of these bands just south of, of the equator. And it's the reddest feature on the planet. There are other small swirling systems in there as well, but the, the red spot is by far the most prominent. It's the typical thing you always see in the textbooks. You see Jupiter and it has this big red blob on it. Yeah. Um, it's very characteristic. I've heard in the in the news recently that there's been a telescope in Hawaii that's been looking at Jupiter and that they're finding that the upper atmosphere is actually much warmer than anywhere else on the planet. Do we think then that it could be the red spot that's actually causing this heat? Yes, possibly. It's actually no surprise that the upper atmosphere of any planet is warmer than lower down. It's the case for the Earth and it's very similar at Jupiter as well. Very, very hot, high up. But there's more heat there that can be explained. And what seems to be happening is that storms, particularly thunderstorms going on in the red spot, are sending out enormously powerful sound waves. And the sound waves that travel upwards deposit their energy in the very tenuous uppermost atmosphere. And that's what's adding the excess heat in the upper atmosphere that we can't explain by other processes. So transport of heat by sound waves. And we're able to actually measure this from Earth. That's right. The telescope being used is on top of Mauna Kea, the high mountain in Hawaii. And the crucial point is that it's a dry part of the world and it's so high that it's above almost all the water vapour in our atmosphere. So you can use infrared wavelengths to see out into space and in this case measure temperature distribution uh, in Jupiter's atmosphere. As it happens, NASA's Juno probe recently reached Jupiter after a five-year voyage, and it may just reveal a thing or two about the big red spot, as Jack Canerney from NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab explained. Jupiter is essentially the repository of what was left over after the formation of our Sun, and it holds within it the secrets of solar system formation. And of course, all the recent discoveries of planets around uh, other stars has we kind of given a, a, a rebirth to the whole idea that we need to understand how our solar system formed. And the best way to do that is to go to Jupiter and understand its composition and its evolution. And so that's uh, part of the wind in Juno's sails. What kind of data are Jack and his team expecting Juno to beam back? Turns out it's a lot. Well, there's a lot of instruments on the spacecraft. There's nine 
different science investigations, and each investigation usually has a, a couple of different instruments. And so we record the magnetic field uh, as we pass by the planet. Uh, that's uh, the investigation that, that I lead. And when we have built up a map of uh, all these magnetic field observations, we'll create a very detailed model of the magnetic field and see if we can't extrapolate that down into Jupiter to find out where it is generated and how a dynamo works. We also carry a, another investigation called a microwave radiometer and that looks at the radiation coming out of Jupiter and by looking at that radiation as a function of the wavelength of the radiation and from where it originates you can infer what the uh, abundance of water and ammonia is in the atmosphere. And that's a very uh, important element in trying to understand how Jupiter formed. So all this goes into building a comprehensive model of Jupiter's interior and an evolutionary model of Jupiter from the time of its birth four and a half billion years ago. With so much information being gathered, when can we expect to hear about what Juno has found? I'm sure that, that, uh, that we'll see a lot of really interesting discoveries and results uh, coming out almost immediately after a few of these orbits at uh, the end of the year, while other science results will come out later when the mission has uh, accumulated this dense net of observations, and that'll take about a year and a half, I think. Until then, I'll keep scanning the horizon in my back garden. So. Uh, what I was wanting to look at was Jupiter. So ideally Jupiter, <laughs> we would be able to see Jupiter tonight, but Jupiter's below the horizon, I think, so we won't be able to see it.